Three up, two across, tap that play button three times and walk through the archway into Dialogue Alley. Hello and welcome to Dialogue Alley, a podcast about Harry Potter books, book translations, and all other things magical. I'm Melanie. I'm Carly. And it's just the two of us. Just the two of us. We can we make can it if we try. We can make it if we try. It's <laughs> us. It's just us. Eric is on vacay, so it's just me and Carly here to talk to you guys about Harry Potter books and book translations and magical things yep. in our in our world. Um, if you are new to our podcast, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. It's awesome having you. I don't know. We love you already. Um, <laughs> we are Harry Potter book collectors. Uh, we collect Harry Potter books from all over the world, different languages. I don't know. Shout out some languages, Carly, that we have in Harry Potter books. Faroese, Taiwanese, oh. Filipino, Greenlandic, Hawaiian, Maori. The list just goes on and on. It does. Almost into almost into the hundreds. It's just We're wild, almost there. wild and crazy. We're almost there, oh. which is crazy. Wild. Um today we have a bit of a briefish episode because we don't have any news for you guys. Uh typically I feel like we have some like cool book news, but things have been calm we've been quiet and on the home peaceful. front it's kind of nice yeah it's i know i know sometimes no news is good news um so today <laughs> yes t- today there's no news for you but we do have a cool main segment and a phenomenal translation to the show that's a book that i can't believe we haven't done I know, yet i'm actually so. super excited about it i bet you we're gonna spend a decent like more time than we think talking about our tots yeah i think so too so uh why don't we get right into our main segment so we can get right to our translation of the show? I would love that. dad jokes this episode i'm gonna i'm gonna find one oh i've got one my news what do you call a classy fish oh, he's what? sophisticated <laughs> that's cute I, but that doesn't that doesn't go with like th- that's not a dad joke that's like a that's a joke joke <laughs> no nah, it's kind of dad joke ish i'll think of one i'm great at dad jokes but that is like, my favorite my favorite joke is what's brown and sticky Oh, no. (laughs) Are you ready? Yeah. A stick. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to tell that at work on Friday. Isn't that great? That's my favorite joke to tell people. I love that. Oh, my God. What's (laughs) red? Wait, this is my other one. What's red and bad for your teeth? I don't know. A brick. (laughs) <laughs> that's awful. That's oh my painful. god! All right, <laughs> let's uh. Oh, all right, let's okay, talk about some Harry Potter that's books. That's the news. We we <laughs> that's that's no, it's not the, that's not the news. There's no news. Main segment, straight to the main segment. <laughs> okay. So for our main segment today, we are continuing on a little bit with our gear up to 25 years of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um. You know, we've done some episodes in the past, like predicting what we thought the books were going to be, what our hopes were for them. We've talked a lot about like the hype of the 25th anniversary of Sorcerer's Stone. And even though I feel like universally we're like not super excited about the books that are going to be coming out. I don't know um, anyone who's excited about those, actually. I don't know. I'm still going to buy them. Like that's that's just the conclusion. Like I don't love them, but I'm still going to buy them. That's where I'm at. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna be mad about it. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's, that's angrily how we are. check out um, in the checkout line. Angrily, let's like press click. 
Like I know that's the I know. Checker, I'm gonna the cashier asks if them. I want a bag. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yes, I want a bag <laughs> for my box set that is unnecessary and that I don't um, even want, but I do. <laughs> I don't even want this, but I need it. Um, but. Thankfully, in the past, in celebrating the anniversary editions of Harry Potter books, we've had some pretty phenomenal books in the past. So I would agree. in this episode, we are going to do a chat about the different anniversary editions that we've had in the past. Just like kind of like a concise episode featuring the past U.S. Um, anniversary editions. So uh, in, a, in a main segment, I'd like to call... Anniversary editions, a history. Oh, I love it. Good title that's, too. I know that's my Harry Potter homage to Hermione. Um, okay, so first up is the tenth anniversary edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, this cover is by Mary Grand Prey. The book is a hardcover book. It is just Sorcerer's Stone. They did not come out with a full set for this book. Um, Carly, why don't you go into some key amazing features about this amazing book? There are so many, as you know, like I, I love the cover art on the jacket, which Melanie just said is by Grand Prey. It is an amazing image. It's Harry with the mirror of Erda said, right. And it's just, I, I remember when I saw it at the bookstore, I was captivated by it. I was on my way to pay my power bill and I bought the book instead. I had to, you know, pay my power bill without (laughs) the money. Actually, it's what had to happen. Money well spent. (laughs) Yeah, I was just stopping off. There's a bookstore across from the place where I would go and pay the power bill. And I was like, well, you know, there's a long line of cars, so I'll just, you know, let it taper off or see if it tapers off and I'll hang out here at Hastings. And I was hanging out in Hastings and they had it. And it just, I had to buy it. And then the boards, I mean, there's internal art that we don't see in other places, there's just so many things that you could go on about like they really for as upset as I am about the 25th anniversary they really did well on the 10th like it's polar opposite yeah and I feel like we've mentioned in the past too like if they just took this like done like a paperback version of the 10th anniversary cover art and released that as the 25th anniversary edition of Sorcerer's Stone. I would have loved that book. Same. I would have been so happy And we know so that they don't have any like issues releasing paperbacks for anniversary editions. Looking at you, Scholastic. Uh, clearly. <laughs> clearly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, th- I just feel like notable features of this book, exactly as Carly was saying, the unique cover art. You cannot find this cover art anywhere in the world other than this one book, which right. is so awesome about it um the boards on this book someone had recommended us do an episode about like our favorite boards in the world and like this would be my number one Easy. easily it's the it's the number one one that i think of it's red with the gold chapter stars all over it it's just gorgeous yep um hands down stunning and love they it like i think um, you talked about it they could have taken that book for the 25th and just made it silver stars yeah, would have loved that's it. All they could, that's all they, they already had the template. It's like Funko Pop. They already had it. They could take a you have page the mold. out of their book. You ha- they had the mold. <laughs> right. I know. Um, it, it has that. And it also does feature um, unique art in the book itself that you don't see anywhere else. So 10th anniversary edition was an absolute slam dunk. I also, I feel like this is like notable, but not really like that crazy of a thing that I love about this book is that it's the exact same size as the standard first edition hardcover of Sorcerer's Stone. I love that. I I love that it's the exact same size. I do too. Because then you can set them all on the shelf and they're all flush and they look nice. You don't have anything that's like what happened? Why did they do a weird size? Like what is the deal? Like we get with some other books. This is nice. I also love, like, if you look at the spine, it goes back to saying J.K. Rowling on it. Like, I love the that. early they, states. I love that. I love that, too. Like, the earliest printings of Sorcerer's Stone did that, which is so cool. Love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just, like, looking at the spine. Even, like, the spine is, like, a beautiful blue. It's all kind of, like, blue cool tones. It's just a it's beautiful well book. well done. Wonderful. They did a really well good done. job. 
And then I believe that there's internal, like when you open the book, there's like a few colored illustrations at the front, if I remember properly. I don't have the book with me. But, you know, I'm, I'm asked quite frequently, like if I could have a signed book, that's what I think about. Like I would love a signed copy of this book. Yeah, I, I wish there was like a J.K. Rowling signed of this. I feel like that would be an awesome book to have. I have mine signed by Mary Graham Prey, which I thought was um, pretty cool and that is unique. really cool i'm jealous i you know though i remember like getting the book signed so i you were able to get whatever books you wanted signed by her so i had uh i think just a regular sorcerer stone i had my 10th anniversary and i had my scholastic school market to get signed by her and i wanted her to have like a bigger reaction to like like, all I wanted her to say was, like, ooh, don't see one of these every day. Like, that right. would have been so cool. But she didn't say anything. I do recall there being this girl in line saying, like, like holding her Harry Potter book and being like, oh, just be careful where you sign it. It's a first edition. And, like, clearly could see, like, the year one on the spine. Oh, dang. And I'm like, and I'm like you're telling right, girl, the illustrator it is a first where to be careful? Like, no. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. It is a first edition. But it's not valuable. Uh-huh. <sighs> I know. This is a whole other conversation. Right, um That we have a lot. <laughs> I Okay. So another like cool feature of it is like right in the jacket, it says like a special anniversary edition of one of the m- best but loved books in history. Like, I think that that's just so cool. I um, agree. It's just, it's just a, what a, what an absolutely... Wonderful, stunning book. 10th anniversary gets a 10 out of 10. Um, Next, because apparently we celebrate often here in the United States, we have the beloved 15th anniversary editions, mm-hmm. which has cover art by Kazuki Buishi. Um, and this was the first time the U.S. saw a cover artist that was not Mary Graham Prey. Everything else done with the books before that right. had been done by her. Um, and what do I these just feel smell like-, like? I'm trying to because these smell different than the hardcover. No, they're good. They're good. I thought they were. It seems like I remember them smelling really like sweet. I also just love like when these books came out. I just remember being like, "Oh my god, the texture of these books is so good." I know um, because I love these it. are like the definition of like smooth, buttery I texture. Know. But they're just if they get delish. worn, they don't feel good anymore. Yeah, but these books literally like just stay on my shelves. Except I have so the one that I'm holding in my hand. Um, I pulled these all off of my shelf that's like literally right in front of me, which is my signed shelf. So this one I have signed by Kazu Kibuishi with like a cute little Harry Doodle, um, which I feel like the Harry Doodle kind of looks like Kazu Kibuishi. I'm looking. Look at that. Can you see it? It's like if Kazu Kibuishi was Harry Potter. I don't Mm -hmm. know. I just love it. Um... Okay, Carly, go five favorite things about the 15th anniversary edition. I loved that they put out a set. I thought that was really, like, nifty. Um, Mm -hmm. I really love the spine art because it makes one cohesive image when you put them together. I thought that was very cool. I also love these covers. I love the tones used by the illustrator on all of the books. They're are you know different illustrations that i prefer over others but together they tell quite a story love it i wish they I were hard covers, was like, but i One get more. my my fill with hardcover <laughs> from you know other translations that were yeah i agree um yeah i just i feel like the texture of this book was like so unique at the time like i feel like i couldn't recall any other books that i had that had the same like buttery beautiful texture Mm -hmm. the spine image obviously is like one of the most iconic things about this set and it's so cool having it in different languages like this is something you you see this cover art all over the world now which is um yeah when i was getting my armenian signed 
um, Katsu was like, I've never seen one of these before. And he was like, what language is this Russian? And I was like, no, it's uh, Armenian. And he was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, he didn't even know that there was one. Yeah, I think that that's... I, I love when they get, like, I don't know, touched by the fact that these books are just all over the world. Like, it's not just in the U.S. These They were originally made for Scholastic, but they're right. everywhere. Which I is also just love... The coolest. You know, Katsu Kibuishi illustrates Amulet, or Illustrated Amulet, which Melanie knows all about. Mm-hmm. I'm sure other listeners will, too. Love Amulet. And it's a really cool, like, him illustrating Harry Potter and bringing his talents over to that area, I think is just really, really fun. You know, it, it's a whole different spin. It's a whole different Harry that we meet. It's a whole different Hagrid. And his Hagrid's pretty good. Um, I love his Hagrid. Love his Hagrid. And I enjoy that. I enjoy not only just seeing a different image, I enjoy how he interprets scenes. I will say I wished he would have chosen a different scene for book two, just because that 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 scene is done so frequently. So I would have loved to have seen. You know a what I can say? Scene. His original artwork for book two was a different scene, and I've seen the image of it because was it? I yeah. So I I got my book signed by him at LeakyCon. Back in oh my god! So when did when did this edition come out? 2013, right? That's when this says inside the book. Mm-hmm. Color illustration Kazu Kibuishi 2013. So it was I, I'm pretty sure it was right after this book came out. Um, I was at LeakyCon. He was there talking about the book and he was talking about all of his different art and he was going through mock-ups for different covers and hit the original cover or the one that he was between or Scholastic was between, was this and an image of, like, uh, I think it's Fox with, like, just glowing eyes kind of, like, peering through, like, which was the Basilisk, but it was just, like, the glowing eyes. Obviously, I feel like they probably decided not to go with that because, like... It's probably too scary. No, but I feel like that's, like, spoiler. Like, spoiler alert that it's a snake, you know? But I feel like there has been... I don't know that people... Oh, there is cover art. Um, I'm thinking of, like, the Spanish book club edition of Chamber of Secrets is literally, like, Harry, like, fighting off a snake. I'm like, you're giving away what the monster is. (laughs) Like, that's the whole mystery of the Chamber of Secrets is finding out what this creature is that's killing people. That's actually a very good point. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm thinking that that's maybe why they didn't go with that. Um, I remember it being very, like, vivid red is mostly what I can remember. I'm wondering if I can, like, find images of it on on the Google now that I'm thinking about it. Like, you know how you can see, like, Mary Grand Prix art? Um, like, her alternate art and stuff. All right. Now to the amazingly phenomenal 20th anniversary editions. Yes. Um, obviously, I'm like, I feel like I'm like somewhat biased because I'm obsessed with these books. Um, artwork is done by Brian Selznick. Um, these books are geniusly done. Um, they are so unbelievably detailed um and it's nothing that we've ever seen before with any cover art um some key features about it are the fact that again we got another box set again it's paperbacks which is cool because it's unique art the best part about it is if you take all of the books and you line up the covers next to each other in order it makes one continuous image Um, and it is like an actual piece of art that he did on this one piece of paper. And it's just amazing, amazing. Like, um, he did this all like pencil magnifying glass to get like every single meticulous detail of these books. Yeah. And I'm obsessed. And what I do love 
that kind of ties the 15th into the 20th anniversary editions is simply that both, you know, in the 15th, we have the spines that make a cohesive image. Here in the 20th, we have the covers that make a cohesive image. But independently, the spines on the 15th aren't too bad either. Like, they're pretty nice. I like them. And yeah, they are. No, they are really nice. It's a nice color palette. It is. And then it's the same for the 20th. Like, the images stand alone. You know, as well yes, as being sure. part of a um, set. And that... That's, I mean, very talented. Scholastic may not always make anniversary editions that make people happy, but they're very good at finding artists when they decide to do different things. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm obviously like very heavily obsessed with the Brian Selznick editions. Um, so I was lucky enough that, um, I was able to go to a Q&A of his in New York City after these books came out. Um, and I feel like I've told the story a few times, but if you're new here, um, like when they finally like opened the panel up for questions after he like he kind of told like his initial story and everything, like I like to say like in true Hermione fashion, like I shot my hand up in the air and I asked him if you were asked by Scholastic to do the 25th anniversary edition, what would you do differently about the book? Or do you have anything like you would have done differently? And it's crazy to kind of think about the fact that like that's now, like the 25th anniversary is coming out now. Right. Oh, I, yeah. And I wonder, I wonder what he, what he would have done differently, if anything, because I feel like these books are so perfect. I wouldn't want him to do anything differently. Um, Honestly, even if the 25th anniversary editions were this exact same Brian Selznick set, but instead of all of the color blocking on each book, because like all of the books are in black and white, but then the font and like the title of the books and everything are each done in a different color. Like if all of that was done in silver with silver accents. Yeah. I, 10 out of 10. Would have been a 10 out of 10. I would have 100% bought that. Loved that. Are they even going to keep the to gold death. foiling on the books that they're releasing? Because they could just make it silver too. No, I think it's going to be gold foiling. Are you I wanted, serious? I wanted everything to be silver because it's the twenty fifth anniversary. I know, it's the silver like, anniversary. It's an. It's. I know, they're but, missing so many really easy opportunities to denote a really cool anniversary. I know. Maybe they feel like Bloomsbury already outdid themselves with their house editions, and so they can't compete. But they can. They just need. I feel like it, they can. I feel like there was. They just need to listen to our podcast. Just needs to listen to our podcast. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, I will say my number one favorite thing about the twentieth anniversary covers by Brian Selznick is the fact that they are done in black and white. And I heard him say that his rationale behind doing that, besides the fact that that's like his style, is to pencil draw whatever. It's not his style to do a color, but he did the covers in black and white to leave something still to the imagination, right? Like, so you can imagine the particular shade of green that Harry's eyes are, or you could imagine better imagine the glowing yellow eyes that right. Hedwig would have. Like, some aspect of it is still left to the imagination, whereas when you have books and the cover art is done in color... It's all kind of put there for you. Like, what shade of brown is Harry's hair? Is it dark brown? Is it, like, almost black? Um, which, we you know, it's, like, almost black, like, jet black hair. Um, but you know what I'm saying. Like, there's still, like, certain aspects of it mm -hmm. that are really left to the imagination, which I think is I've actually the coolest heard, thing about it. Uh, and this isn't Harry Potter related, but it goes in what, with, with what he was saying. Blah, there are words. Um <sighs> Is that I heard an illustrator talking. They'd illustrated like one or two books out of this series. It wasn't a well-known series. And I don't even remember what books they were. Um, and this was before I even started collecting Harry Potter. So I thought it was an interesting concept at the time. But they illustrated the characters all facing forward. So all you saw was their back. You never saw their faces. And it was because... You know, as you're reading these books, you already get the, an idea of what these people are going to look like. And they didn't want to change your image of the characters. 
And I yeah, thought that was kind of clever. Just, that's awesome. You know, it lets that the imagination awesome. do the thing. I know. Um, I When he said that, it just stuck with me so profoundly when yep, he said that. And every time that, I hear I just, people complain, they're black and white. I'm like, but he ha- there's method to the madness. I kind of get a little so, defensive so about it, if I'm being honest, because his I rationale know, I makes do so too. much sense. And, and he has, he had a good point. All of the other Harry Potter books, for the most part, are illustrated, with the exception of the wood cuttings from Bloomsbury. They're all illustrated. That's in exactly color. it. I know. I was tr- I was literally turning around and looking at my shelves to kind of think like, what other books are done in black and white? And there aren't any other than those. And even those, like, they have that bold color right. palette. Right. Still like, color present. Throughout. Like I don't th- exactly. I don't think of those covers as like being black and white because there still are very vivid pops of color on those covers this is the only one i can really think of that has a pure black and white color palette and i am here for it same same love it um so to continue on with our obsession with brian selznick's amazing work why don't we get into our translation of the show okay The translation of the show is such a good one, and it's one me and Melanie are really excited about, and I'm sure Eric would be if he were too. It's Belarusian. How have we not done Belarusian? I don't know. what what I, I had to go back in our list and check, but I was shocked that it's never been, never been it's done before. it's such a good one. And I have hope that they may finish out the series. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but... We'll see. There's a lot going on right now. But anyway, the translator is Alana Piotrovich. And it is published by Yanuskevich. General information on the language is it is the native language of the Belarusians and one of the two official state languages in Belarus alongside Russian. Additionally, it is spoken in some parts of Russia, Lithuania, Latvia, Poland, and Ukraine by Belarusian minorities in those countries. 5.1 million native speakers, which is actually more than I thought. I was thinking it was closer to four. They speak it as an L1 and 6.3. Wow, as an L2. I mean, that kind of makes sense, given in that it's found in other countries, but I'm, that's pretty cool. That's very cool. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those languages, like, I feel like I had no idea even, like, existed until I was, like, collecting Harry Potter books. Oh, uh, Belarusian is cool. Pricey. I don't know that much about it, it is really but cool. it's cool. It is, well, now we know a little bit more. Yeah. So, there's that. Did you hear the sound? Do you know what that sound is, Carly? Oh, I think we had a book and wrapping live on the podcast. <laughs> That's the sound of me uh, not taking Carly's advice and keeping the plastic <laughs> on my books. I didn't even realize it. But I guess that's how I get uh, verification that we never did this book before because mine was still in plastic. And how on earth could I sniff it through that? Exactly. It has to happen right now. <laughs> Uh, our listeners could hear this. This is like pretty exciting. Like, Eric is not here with us tonight because he is on vacation with his beautiful family, but he's with us in spirit so much so, in fact, that he has joined our live listen in and he's listening to us as we record this. And he, I can see his little video and he's making faces at me, and then just a <laughs> random foot appeared as he's like, talking. <laughs> and there's his uh, a less random foot. That foot is his foot. Oh my god. All right. Definitely well, relaxed. <laughs> ah, I wish to be on vacation next week. <laughs> next week is my my spring break. Oh, so good. I'm It'll be a good note. I know. I'm going to have a hard time smelling this book, Carly. My nose is so stuffed up from my allergies. So I kind of remember what mine smelled like. So I'll get your take and then we'll, we'll meet in the middle. All right. I'm going to try. 
It didn't exceed expectation. There's definitely a smell there. I want to say it's I remember bad. like a sweet smell. I don't remember anything musty. I remember like sweet near the spine. The no, paper it's nice. smelled like paper. No, it's good. It, I would give it an exceeds expectations. Yeah, it's not acceptable. It doesn't stink. It's not neutral. But it's not like, you know, Slovak. No book. Slovak to me Slovak. honestly reminds me a little bit of a bakery. That I have no idea where you're getting that from, but because it just it, I walk in it. and it just it's a sweet, like sweet good smell. It's what I it's get when I walk perfect. into a bakery. That book is that book is perfect. I think I found my X factor. Um, so yeah, smell exceeds expectations. Eric is nodding maniacally. He's cheersing us. Yes, on so, his vacation with his vacation. I can, I'm not gonna. Well, I can turn on my video for this. Oh, I turned on my flashlight. Hold on. Great. <laughs> it's going well. <laughs> totally doing well. I will cheers you with my Diet Coke. I'll cheers with Hagrid because I don't have a drink. It's, yeah. Okay. Anyway, back to this book. How cool is this book? And I have one through, I have all three of them. Only one through three have been uh, put out so far. But yeah, I know that's that's kind of like a cool thing. But they all feel I only have the book same. one because it's like they're all it's not unique cover art, th- mm, but they're all delightful. Like they all they maintain the same quality throughout, which I because sometimes the first one comes out and then the second one comes. We're out not like, up to happened? quality yet. We just talked about the smell. We didn't even go through all the other things. I'm not, well, I was just saying that they maintain it. If they don't know that it's good quality, right. it could be bad. All right. Well, we'll get to that after we talk about. But all I'm these just other saying, things. like sometimes a book comes out and they don't maintain things. They, they this they've done, so I appreciate it. Um, and one through three are out, and you can find them somewhat easily in different places. Oh, we didn't talk about the rarity or value of the book. We just went straight to smelling it. Well, what's the rarity? Um, this is actually a bit hard. I've not checked on eBay for it, so it could be. Around, I know I, I bought two and three off of eBay from a seller over there, but I also haven't looked in a little bit because I have what they what's out. Um, mm-hmm. And I honestly don't know how easy it is. I don't know how easy it is to get the books out given the political situation. Mm-hmm. And that, as we know, can have a drastic effect on things. Before things became so you know, tumultuous in that area of the world, you could find the books. They were out there in print. It wasn't hard. You could find them on eBay. I'm uncertain now, actually. Do you know? No, I would say, but I would say just given the um, climate of everything, I would probably put the rarity maybe at a three. Oh, perfect. I had the um, same number in my head. So I would say a three as well. Right. Um, And then I guess the value is probably like a little bit difficult to gauge as well just right based off of that because i'm not sure on the demand of the book everyone you know bella russian is a fairly recent translation so not every you know i know we have a lot of new translation collectors but a lot of people have been able to get the book recently as well because it's still newer again it was still in print it was harder to get from the publisher eric had i think quite a story about that actually I know he I think he messaged us saying that like his book got lost or something it like did, that. It did. It got lost. He wound up having to buy another from I think it was Harrison or someone else that had bought a few at yeah. a time. So he wound up getting a book, but he never got it from the publisher like some of us uh, did. Right. I think I probably got mine from Sean, if I'm being real about the whole thing. I think you probably. may have. I'm trying I don't I don't <laughs> remember. Right. But yeah, um, I, I would say value is maybe 40 to 50 is the number that I have in my head. That sounds about maybe right. 30, I, would, but I would probably put it at about I that. I want to say books two and three, I paid 30 and 20 shipping. Okay. So somewhere in there I feel is like, what I'd I feel say. like that's, that's pretty realistic. Yeah. Um. All right. Size and proportions. <gasps> I loved the size and proportions of this book. Um. I agree. I would give it an outstanding I would, size and proportion. Yeah, this is an outstanding. Um, you it's know a what? Great little no, rectangle. I feel like I'm throwing around outstandings a lot with size and proportions lately. I'm going to take it back and give it an exceeds expectations. Um, I do love it, but I feel like it doesn't, like, it is quite rectangular. It is 
a li- it's like a little bit stout, which is nice. But I feel like it doesn't have like an above and beyond uh, size and proportion like, say, Czech does to me or Asturian or Lithuanian or Kamai. I feel like those to me like stand out with their size and proportion. This is a very lovely size and proportion, but it's not an outstanding to me. I so exceeds love expectations. It. So I would give it an ex- you- exceeds expectations if it were thinner in the spine area. I actually love that it's got a like it's thick. I love that, and that is part of the size and proportions for me. That's why I'm giving it an outstanding. All right, that is valid. Your feelings are valid. Um, however, how the book feels in my hands is for sure an outstanding. Mm. It is Mm. such a good, in comparison to the U.S. one, this is like a gorgeous texture. It is so so buttery. Smooth. It's also like the, the cover, like just the boards themselves are so rounded on the edges, which like the smoothness is so nice. The roundness of the spine is so nice. It is just like, oh, it feels so good in my hands. Outstanding. Yes. I love it. Love it. I, I, I remember when I unwrapped the plastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry I kept the plastic on for so long. I was missing out. And I felt the book and I was like, oh, my word. They have it was it was it felt better in my hand than I thought it would. Definitely an outstanding. Like I was I was nicely surprised. Nicely surprised. Yeah, I absolutely love it. It is so good. Um, and with that quality I would probably give it an outstanding. I Mm -hmm. think that the quality of this book is really nice. I love the paper. The way that it is bound is beautiful. Like everything about this book is very well done. They thought out so many things. And I feel like they're trying to make a statement here. Like they didn't just want to make a book. They wanted to make a statement with this book. They wanted to say not only do they have it, they did it well. Yeah, I agree. I think. I think the quality is, you know, absolutely and they maintain that throughout one or two and three, which is another reason I would love to have like a four five, six, seven. Like maybe I would. I Yeah, please, please, because I would love it. <laughs> Who knows? Um, um, yeah, then cover art and interpretation of the cover art. I I mean, I'm going to give it an exceeds expectations only because it's not. It's not original. No, I'm giving it an out. No, I'm going to give it an outstanding because the category is cover art slash interpretation of the cover art. And this is a beautiful interpretation of the can Brian Selznick it cover so I art. Can you see it? Yeah, I just want to like look at it side by side with the U.S. Like you actually see a bit more of the image on the Belarusian than you do on the um than you do on the U.S. edition. For example, like, you see a little bit more of Hagrid Mm -hmm. in the top corner, um, which is really nice. And just the interpretation, I think the fact that we're getting this book in a hardcover um, is just... Like, this is the hardcover I would have loved for the U.S. to do. A thousand percent. If we had this, but this as a hardcover for the 25th... We'd be happy. Amazing. Only this one buff. And this one book, I'd be so happy. The Another thing that I know it's a bit weird, but the back of the book, too, it doesn't really have any art on the back. But I mean, it does, but it doesn't. It's very minimal. I love the, the striping. I know it's on the U.S. edition as mm-hmm. well, but I really it looks yeah. to me nicer on the Bella Russia than the U.S. Yeah, I agree. It's more um, there's more of a contrast on the Bella Russia yes. than there is on the U.S. Like you can. I feel like you can. And you can kind because of it's a hard tell. cover, you actually like I feel like the lines are actually very straight on, whereas the hard, the soft cover paperback, you don't get that because, you know, you bend the book, you get it creases. You miss out on, I think, what they want the back to look like. Yeah, I I think the interpretation is very, very lovely. Yes, I agree. I love this one. I'm going to give it an outstanding for it, too. And they they they. I, they changed, I think, a little bit just from looking at you hold the book. The jewel tone, which is red for book one, it's red, but it's not as, it doesn't look as red. It looks a little bit more. You know what it is? Mm-hmm. Is on the U.S. edition, it's a matte finish and it's a glossy finish on the Belarusian. Like okay. you could actually see it. Do you see like the light reflecting on my face with yeah. the Belarusian? 
you can't really it see it as it much does with the actually US, when but you did that, but the, it reflected more here. Yeah, it's a shiny. Okay, that's it's a it very looked, shiny it, the shadow finish. Made it look more matte. This is very matte. Okay, like the the US is very matte. Um, yeah, I would say my X factor for this book is just. I'm pretty sure that this is the first hardcover with Brian Selznick's art. I think you're right. Um, I I, I love know that the, there's also they, like they the Hebrew. Um, yeah, there's also the Hebrew box set they came out with with Brian Selznick's art. And I feel French like there's too. one more French and, and Italian. French. Um, oh really? Yeah, Italians just do everything. I whatever. Know. Like they just they just oh there's a new cover. Let's just use that. Um, but I feel like Bella Russian did it first, and they did it very well. And I don't. And that's my that's my X factor. Is like I got the book that I wanted. I got my hardcover Brian Selznick, and I am so happy with it. So my X factor, it, I'm just my X factor is the language. I love that Bella Russian did this. I love it, and I love that it's better better quality, honestly, than some of the translations coming out of that area of the world. They did it very well, and I love that it exists. I'm very thrilled to have it on my in my shelves. Me too. I love this book. Mm-hmm. I just I love the Brian Selznick art so much. I uh, I love that they used it. Yeah, I love I, that they used this book to kind of make a statement. Is how it feels like to me. I, I don't have other Belarusian books, so I can't vouch. I don't know if this is a one off or an anomaly or just how they do things. But I love that it's done well. Me too. I just appreciate this book very much. Tremendously. So, yep. So many good things can be said here. agree so many good things could be said however for today i think we have said them all because that is all we have time for today oh um if you oh (laughs) i can Um, keep going (laughs) but (laughs) we're just we'll just be gushing about these books um However, if you would like to get in touch with us, you could do so in many different ways. One of the main ways that you can find us is through Instagram. You could contact Carly at All the Pretty Books. Eric, who's not here today, but will be back soon enough. He's here in spirit. Um, at in spirit. Um, at Nocturne Eric, or you can um find me at the Harry Potter Collection. You can also go directly to the Instagram account for this podcast, which is at Dialogue Alley Podcast. You can DM us on any of those different uh, any of those different Instagram accounts um, to get in contact with us, or you can also send us an email. I feel like we haven't shouted out our email in a while, yeah. but it is dialoguealleypodcast at gmail.com. Feel free to send us an email with any questions, um, suggestions, anything like that. So those are the main places that you can find us. You could also find pictures of the books, um, not only on our Instagram accounts, but also on our various websites. So Carly's website is allthepreadybooks.net. Mine is theharrypottercollection.com. Or you can find pictures of our translation of the show at dialoguealley.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, on Facebook. You can follow me on TikTok at Magically Melanie. Um, there are just so many places that you can find us. And one of our favorite places that you can find us is on MuggleNet. We are a MuggleNet family podcast. And if you just click the little family podcast tab on MuggleNet, there we are, Dialogue Alley. So that is a pretty cool thing. Um, And possibly one of our favorite places that you could participate with our podcast is on our Discord. We have a really cool community of different translation collectors or Harry Potter collectors or Harry Potter fans that just are super active on our Discord. We love them and appreciate them all so much. Um... And you could listen to bonus episodes and all sorts of things like that by supporting us on Patreon. And that's how you get access to the Discord. So it's like the Discord, the bonus, all things are from Patreon, um, which is www.patreon.com slash Dialogue Alley. Um, Like I said, bonus episodes, ad-free episodes, all sorts of good stuff is found right there. Um, And I think that that's it. I think we did it. That's it. 
that was a whole lot. That was a whole lot of stuff. There's lots of places you can find us. Um, and yeah, we look forward to uh, doing another episode for you guys next week with Eric back. We miss him, but he'll be back from his vacay. Yep. Soon enough. Um, special thanks to our editor, Tommy. I feel like we don't we don't shout out Tommy in this. He's probably like going to giggle like as we are saying all of this. But Tommy is absolutely wonderful. We couldn't be doing this podcast without him at this point. It He just makes our lives so much easier. And we are so, so fortunate to have him. And thank you so much. So special shout out to Tommy. Appreciation, sappiness for, for him today. Totally. Um, <laughs> but... For today, it is now time to walk back through the archway and into our daily lives. So we will catch you next time. Bye. See ya.